Reapy, the Jamaica Bay Guardian for the American Literal Society. And today we're driving south on Crossbay Boulevard through Broad Channel to a beach called American Ballfield Beach, which is part of the Jamaica Bay Wildlife Refuge. It's May 20th, uh, which is the peak time for horseshoe crab migration in Jamaica Bay. It's springtime, it's coming on the high tide, and it's time for all the horseshoe crabs to come up and lay their eggs on the shoreline, the annual mating ritual of the horseshoe crabs. All right, what we have here is, is a, a male horseshoe crab. The males are smaller than the females here. This is a female and a male. And this one actually has a tag on it. So uh, the National Park Service is tagging the horseshoe crab to find out where they go, where they move, what beaches they use, perhaps how long they live uh, since these crabs no longer molt. And uh, so we can actually protect them in the future. And the tail, which as a kid I thought was a poison stinger, is actually, it's called the telson. It's a rudder, so it helps them steer through. It also helps them right themselves if they get turned over in the marshes here. So we're gonna put this guy back, let him get back to business here, and we'll look for more. Here we have a nice little cluster of crabs, two males and a female. And uh, one might ask, why are they interesting and why are we concerned about them? Well, first of all, this is an ancient animal that precedes the dinosaurs. They date back in the fossil records over 400 million years, the same basic structure. Though this is a very successful structure. Also, ecologically, these crabs lay billions of eggs at the high tide mark this time of year. And it's very important for all the migratory shorebirds and all the marine life, all the fish life that come in to feed on that resource. Some of the birds rely on this heavily. One in particular, called the red knot, travels nonstop from Brazil. And this is its first landfall, so it's burned up a lot of its body fat. So it needs to feed voraciously on the horseshoe crab eggs and actually double its weight before it'll head north up to the Arctic breeding grounds. So they have a very important ecological role. Many of the small fish come in to feed on them. Um, all of the brant geese even come in to feed on them. We're seeing offshore there. The interesting medical thing about these crabs is that they have a copper-based blood, which is bluish in color. And it has a clotting factor called the C factor, which when refined in the lab, can detect minute traces of bacteria. So if one is getting a, a vaccination, one's getting a blood transfusion, uh, they test it with the element from the horseshoe crab. So there are many medical labs that will collect them uh, this time of year. They'll bleed them in the lab, but then they're supposed to return them to the same environment. So it's one of our keystone iconic animals in the bay. Very important, again, ecologically and medically and educationally. Give me a horseshoe crab and I have the attention of kids in the school. So what does this remind you of? What does it look like to you? It looks like a giant cockroach. Looks like a giant cockroach. <laughs> what do you think, Mary? What is it? Feet look like a lobster. Yeah, it's got feet sort of like a lobster, you know? I'm thinking about like a stingray maybe because of the long a tail. A stingray? Okay. But it's actually, uh, Although it's called a horseshoe crab, it's not really a crab. It's more closely related to scorpions and spiders and dates back in the fossil records over 400 million years. So this living dinosaur, as some people call it, predates the dinosaurs. And this is a very old individual. You see all the barnacles growing on it. And uh, oh, he's got a community of bryozoans. This little patch in there. There's lots of little animals all living in a colony. So it's a whole living community that travels around the bay. I'll take them. The best, best way to hold them, never hold them by the tail. Hold them by the front. They can't really get. Large compound eye here and here. Like an insect, many facets. They can detect motion. Two little eyes up in the front here. You can see where they're going. 
And then they have light sensitive receptor cells on their tails, underneath them, so they can tell which way is up. So one of the major threats to this crab is over harvesting by the conch and eel industry. What they do is they use the larger females um, and will chop them up and use them as bait. Apparently that is very attractive to eels and conch. Of course, another major threat is shoreline development. As more and more of our shorelines become bulkheaded or actually flooded by higher tides, um, that will not allow the crab to nest there anymore. So the future uh, is problematic for this crab. But uh, there's a lot of interest right now uh, and a lot of awareness by the public and interest in protecting these crabs. So we're trying to do everything we can. It's important that we educate the public about the value of the horseshoe crab and get them involved. I think once they learn about this fascinating animal, they're on board and trying to help protect it and preserve it in the bay. Some of the things you can do are if you see people poaching them or damaging them, hitting them, uh, alert one of the rangers at the refuge. Hi, I'm Don Rippey, the Jamaican Bay Guardian and Director of the Northeast Chapter of the American Littoral Society. And I'm Alex Sablocki, the Executive Director of the Jamaica Bay Rockaway Parks Conservancy. For the past 20 years, groups like ours have been protecting and restoring habitats in and around Jamaica Bay. But a lot more needs to be done and we could use your help. Consider volunteering to help us improve the bay. As nonprofit organizations, we are grateful for any monetary contributions you can make to help us in these efforts. Finally, we invite you to share this video with your friends. And we invite everyone to come down to the bay and explore the world of wonders that we have right here in our own backyard. Together we can protect and restore Jamaica Bay.